In this video, I'm going to show that limit n approaches infinity, nth root of n is 1. Uh, for example, you can try some of the numbers. The square root of 1, we are considering the positive values only, is 1. Square root of 2 is 1.4142. It's an irrational number, right? Uh, then you can try square root of 3 and whatnot. Now, let's go ahead and observe that all these square roots are greater than or equal to 1. If we exclude the n equal to 1, all of them are going to be greater than 1. So we could safely make this assumption nth root of n is going to be equal to 1 plus some number delta n, okay? Because for n greater than or equal to 2, the root is actually, or, or nth root is greater than 1. So now we can do that. So if I raise the power to n on both sides, I get n is equal to 1 plus delta n to the power n. Now, if I use the binomial theorem, I'm going to get the following, 1 plus nc1 um, delta sub n plus nc2 delta sub n square plus dot 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 plus ncn delta sub n to the power n. By the way, ncr, okay, ncr is the combination of r items from n distinct items and that is given by n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. And if you simplify it, um, it becomes pretty easy, okay? You just use the factorial and you'll, you'll get the number. Now, for n greater than or equal to 2, we can safely make the following assumption. Um, n is going to be greater than n c 2 delta sub n square. Now, why is that going to be the case? Look, all these terms on the right in this equation, okay, all these terms on the right, all these delta sub n's are actually positive numbers and ncr, all of them are positive. So you have a bunch of positive number added to one. So it makes sense to take make this assumption that the n itself, which is equal to all of these things on the right, right? This whole thing must be greater than just one term. That's pretty obvious, right? Uh, if that is the case, I could do the following, which is n must be greater than nc2 is n factorial over n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial delta sub n square n is greater than n factorial is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial okay all of it divided by n minus 2 factorial and 2 factorial is just 2 times delta sub n square now this and this is gonna cancel out that's going to give me n is greater than n times n minus 1 divided by 2 times delta sub n whole square. Now, n is a positive number. I can divide both sides by n. That's going to give me 1 is greater than n minus 1 over 2 times delta sub n square. If I multiply both sides, I'm going to get 2 and then divide both sides by n part and n minus 1. That's going to give me 2 divided by n minus 1 is greater than delta sub n square or equivalently square root of 2 over n minus 1 is greater than delta sub n. Now remember, our deltas are positive numbers, right? So this guy is greater than zero, right? Or equivalently, I could say zero is less than delta sub n is less than 
square root of 2 over n minus 1. However, limit n approaches infinity, right? Square root of 2 over n minus 1 is nothing but 0, right? That's exactly what we get if we take the limit. That tells us that limit n approaches infinity delta sub n is equal to 0 from this relation. Now, from that we could say limit, so let's go back here, limit n approaches infinity nth root of n must be equal to limit n approaches infinity 1 plus delta sub n. But remember, this is nothing but 1 plus limit n approaches infinity delta sub n, right? But this guy is nothing but 0. So we just found out that limit n approaches infinity nth root of n is nothing but 1. I hope that this discussion was helpful. Thank you very much.